So Wayfinder teamed up with Art Station to do an art blast, which is something they do on their magazine where they showcase art from the various different games and the, the game artist. So you can go in there, look at all the art, the concept art and stuff like that. But in this video, I wanted to showcase some of the things that Wayfinder could have been because we see some of the past art and where it was headed. And we can also see some things that we haven't seen yet that might be in the future for Wayfinder. And I just kind of wanted to share that and go over it. So I thought it'd be interesting if you guys are interested. I have a link down in the description and in the comments for you guys to check out. But let's go ahead and jump into it with this first image, you know, the Wayfinder logo that we've all see all the time. This is from Billy Gerritsen, the director of brand and user experience or UX. Something I kind of wanted to get into at some point. But I think it's pretty cool. But what's cool is we scroll down, we see the old Wayfinder logo and it has something called the torch bearer on that logo, which is somebody actually lighting the flame that it's on the Y. Now uh, we can see that the text is a bit different and the Wayfinder part is a little bit different with the A and the, the orange beam going across. We look up here, you know, it's underneath, but the flame is still there. So I think the concept of the torch bearer is still pretty cool. And they do have that icon by itself here, Torchbearer graphics. So I think that would be something that's really cool to see, maybe like on a shirt or like this cool in-game merch. Just that's, that's pretty cool, I like that. And then some of the various Wayfinder logos, but really I just wanted to show you that Wayfinder uh, logo, the Torchbearer thing. I think that's really cool. Moving on to something that where the game could have been, here it says, this is the very first UI concept I worked on in 2018. I really enjoyed this stage of development since you can kind of sketch out ideas for gameplay without too many constraints and organically arrive at cool systems to build the experience around. As we see down here, we have forward stab, circle slash, and elemental power. So they're actually working with like elements in the game. So that weapons will have like different elements you can use. And there, oh, there was something that I, I'll see if I can find again and pull up for you guys. We were talking about how the weapons were meant to be like imbued with elements and that's what you will use as you leveled up the weapons. It's kind of an interesting system here. So if you look up here at the top right, it says the new ability unlock, you can do abilities. There's like a weapon dealer over here on the side. This is like a mock-up of the art style, of course, but you know, city is a lot different. We have little Wayfinder logo icon logo over there your party down at the bottom left i don't know what hydragoon is i guess this is your boss meter down here something called the hydragoon so that's pretty cool here's a cool two-headed dragon fight we got shield weak block 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 then you know the shield is weak it'd be down here on the ground i don't think the player would really be able to see that but i guess if another player could watch it they'd be like yo your shield's weak buddy and here they're fighting oh this is the hydragoon right here so hydragoon is a rage we got Mad Zen. We got the little map up here. Joe Matt left the party. I guess he rage quit because they weren't getting too far with the Hydra Zoom. <laughs> and we can see how the player abilities are laid out here. X, Y, B. We see this in other games on consoles as well. It's a very controller based menu layout with everything down here. It says another super early HUD exploration building upon the first. One day I will find a way to incorporate the in world align status text these in world aligned shield week like this somewhere they'll be useful i don't know if the player will be able to see it right now <laughs> b class selection so this says this was the very first concept ui mock-up i did for the character creation in this era of development players would create a fully customized character to start the game off much like an mmo and if you didn't know that was the idea of wayfinder at first it's going to be kind of more of a traditional type of mmo and as the game progressed and they felt they wanted to tell the stories of these characters because they was building the characters out they're like yo these are pretty cool characters let's attach some stories to them so they decided to go ahead and build out flesh out some more backstory for the characters and have them be classes in that sense where they're they're already classes but they're already like their own archetypes but here you can see there's like race human gender face style there's like hairstyle voice style hair color eye color skin color there's the abilities you can pick and skills and then this will be your your wayfinder that you end up making i guess you don't really see his eyes with his face but it's kind of cool It'd be kind of cool to see where that uh where that will end up going. Here is uh, the original direction that was explored for the loadout screen. The game was designed around a created avatar, and their armor and weapon would determine your abilities. So another interesting concept. Whatever abilities you actually had would be determined by your 
your armor weapon. We probably see a game come out like that in the future, I think, because that is an interesting concept for an MMO, having your items and stuff determined, your skills determined by the gear that you're wearing. But yeah, Ring of Storms, Accessory Charms, Soul Shatter Blade, Hydra Steel, something that you would kind of, that's how you would build your class upon, like if you wanted to build, I guess they kind of do that in Albion Online a little bit, like depending on the gear you get, you're wearing, depends on what skills you have. So it's still a cool concept. So Avatar rank four, four, two, strength, armor, resistance, fire, all that good stuff. Stats were definitely a lot easier to read here. I feel like they could bring these stats back the way this is right now. <laughs> I don't think there's really like any fire, ice, lightning, or poison resistance in the game as such, but just knowing like, you know, what int intellect would actually do or what magic defense would actually do would be kind of great. So here is the draft became the foundation of what we currently have, uh, albeit with a much prettier coat of paint. This came as a result of switching from a created avatar to characters with established lore and styles. And so here we have the survivalist. We have sword and shield, berserker prime, <laughs> berserker prime. <laughs> now they're now it'd be like heroic berserker or something, I guess. Chest burster. So look at this. You have two weapons here. So that's something we might be able to see in the future here, where you're dual equipping weapons. So the sword and shield and a gun. I know that's something they asked for. People have asked for in the feedback thing is being able to equip more than one weapon. And that would actually be kind of cool to do in the game as well. You can change depending on the situation. Maybe you wanted to fight this boss with a ranged weapon or maybe you wanted to go up close for some of the smaller enemies. It would be kind of cool if you could do that. So hopefully we'll see that in the future. I'm going to scroll down some more. We have the armory. You can look how this looks here. In this scheme, we had a sub-menu flyout giving you contextual actions for the type of gear slot you were focused on, very similar to games like Warframe. Now they kind of switched it to that overhead where you tab across instead of doing it that way. This is probably a little bit more cumbersome to get through, but here it shows it right here, I think. Diving in and out of sub menus ended up adding a lot of friction, so we moved to navigation to quickly jump between secondary management screens. This is the initial mock-up for the current echo management menu. So like, especially if you're playing on controller with this menu, trying to scroll down and then doop, 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 and then go to that one. Definitely this way is a lot easier to kind of navigate depending on what it is that you're messing with instead of having to go down each notch and then mess with whatever. But here's what the echo menu, it's very similar to what we have now, not so uh, flashy. And then we have a little affinity bar so we can see which way our affinities are leaning this way. We see how that's changed up now where it has the rings. This part here is interesting. Wayfinder leverages procedural dungeons and content to keep things interesting. It says, though early on we struggled to convey a sense of world progression and we explored presenting activities and quest as an adventure map we called the Atlas. So <laughs> this is, I wonder if this is like the, the standard for where the, uh, the little tower, the battle tower have come from. So it looks like we're actually going across the map and there's like little waypoints and important node stops here these little green spots with the arrows on them like checkpoints waypoints something's gonna happen here it says there's a quest here this is kind of in the in the vein of how diablo's map sort of is but when you scroll down you still have to run to the location so i wonder if that was gonna be more open world like that or if they decided to just go ahead and you know it says hold quick start so you're starting from this map yeah that wouldn't have been that cool so in this design, the player would kick off expeditions and hunts directly from the Atlas. Clicking on destination would bring up the match setup menu where you could modify your procedural generation using mutators and imbuements. So this would keep everybody in menus. Like right now, how they have a setup is you can go into the gloom dungeon, you select your thing, and then you kind of run around a little bit until you get sucked into the dungeon. If you decide to do it with the party or matchmaking, or if you're doing it by yourself, you're just still stuck into the uh, gloom dungeon. But this is how this is. We can see the different mutators. There's a player, world, and enemy mutator. Think fast, no response. Completing the expedition before five minutes doubles all gathered materials. What? Blood Moon guarantees a Blood Moon Panther event to spawn, but player's vision is halved at night. So that would be kind of cool if they did something like that now, where we can uh, have mutators similar to this. I know they're going to be adding some more mutators into the game, some more imbuement. So I hope they also add some that aren't elemental that does do things like this. They were talking about changing up the bone grind and the trickster coin grind so it could kind of always make it spawn like that. So maybe there will be a way where there will be a mutator that will spawn the trickster coin to come into play. But it says corrosive all enemies explode on death, killing an enemy near gatherable materials coated with corrosion. This is, this is kind of cool. I like that. 
Push back the gloom in the northern wilderness of the Reaver Woods, home to creatures and Reavers alike. I recommend a power rating 85. Not today. Area knowledge. So there's like different lore pieces you will pick up in the area and it will give you knowledge of that area. And you to get area perks. That's pretty interesting. You like run fast, run faster if you're in the area. If you have leveled up your area knowledge. That's something I kind of hope if the zones are like big enough like that, that they add into zones. And this one says continued even storylines and quests accepting turning in what happened from the adventure map. I think it was a cool idea, but definitely took away from the immersion of the world and happens. Yeah, everything being in the menu is not a fun thing to do. Uh, that was a problem that a lot of people had with games that recently came out. Like the most recent one I can think of is the Skull and Bones game. Everything was very menu heavy from watching people play. It wasn't really a, like a lot of lot of doing stuff in the world. So it says, ah, you have located the source of the Corrupted River. The goblins are getting more bold by the hour and dangerous. And then, you know, our quest is like Lorm Ipsum Dolar Sitamet. You know, those are very important words to have in the quest. <laughs> the objective takes long, very long, super long. But here's some new extra expeditions. There's tells you there's an event going to be there, a precursor archive, and the corruption mutator we all love that and how much gold you get for the quest in this next section it's like even we after we moved away from the adventure map i still tried to find ways to present the unlocked areas in a way that made the world feel connected and this is still kind of leaning it's almost headed toward that gloom portal that we have now if you look but there's still a discoveries thing here on the map which is really interesting i hope we actually go into that world lore gathering type thing that it has going on here it says pre-alpha season. So we have Aurelian, Reaver Woods, Will, Willwood Grotto. We haven't seen that yet. Old Road. Haven't been that yet. We're going to take you down to the Old Town Road. And Forest Ruins. We also haven't been there yet. And the Forest Pit. Interesting. Unless that's Highlands. Forest could be Highlands. Well, Highlands is up here, though. Hmm. Interesting. And so here is playing more with shapes that feel like you are peeking through portals into the gloom ultimately these ideas transform into the gloom gate design scholars corridor is that the repository of knowledge spider layer codex halls yeah really in reaver woods sheep in wolf's clothing and then here's item crafting basic item crafting ui mock-up mock -up. this menu is it's very similar to what we have now this is our discoveries. We actually have this in here now, the way the discoveries look, where we can discover the different things and read about them, but we don't get like any rewards or perks for it. So that's something I hope they add back into the game as we discover these different areas that we actually get some perks for the game again for it. And then here is the, like the more final landmark look of it. Here's this menu map concept. I never did get, get it past the grayscale stage, but I did have a lot of fun painting up a stylized environment with little landmarks. So that was that from Billy Garrison, director of Brand and UX. I thought it was pretty interesting. It showed a lot of where the game came from, like where we could have been if the game went a different way. I'm glad that Wayfinder is where it's at now, but it's interesting to think about what kind of game we would have been playing if they didn't decide to change it. So here we're looking at the principal UI artist, Dan Height, and we can see you know, a lot of stuff that we have now for the UI that we have right now. But something that I think is interesting is as far as like Venomous's head right here. I think we have this uh, Mohawk head yet. We might have, I might have missed it. Is here we have color presets, a customized color, and then we have diff different color presets for our loadouts. There's also a couple of different things here, like items that we don't have, like this spray, and I think this is a, a item for your gun maybe. But if we scroll down again, there's another head here for Silo with the dreads, the spider braids. We don't have this one in game yet. It looks like he has goggles around his neck. It's a pretty cool one. We've seen this one with the monocle type eye and this one over here. And that's what I want to show here in the screen from Dan Height in this Wayfinder Mac up. And then Baldi Konjin Conan. I think maybe the J is silent. So here we have Gloom Precursor Concepts. So we haven't even really seen Precursor yet. Like in that first early image when they were fighting the Precursor in the beginning, we saw them a little bit, but we never got like a full sense of what Precursors actually look like. And they look pretty cool. 
That sword is a sword that we definitely need in game, and it would be kind of cool if we have a character that wields a one-handed sword, similar to that, because that's pretty cool. <laughs> but here are some other uh, precursor concepts here. And we see you have floating swords. This one looks like it has a dual staff. We have our gloom casters, our gloom chonkers. This is a gloom spreader, better as we know him as dread legion but apparently dread there's more than one dread legion and it seems like the goal of these gloom spreaders like the dread legion is to spread the gloom everywhere where you are so once you defeat the gloom spreader it seems like that that area that we're in will start to kind of be relieved of gloom most likely armor within the eyelids can pull backwards we have our gloom spiders gloom poop <laughs> gloom stomper Early Gloom Explorations, this cool dragon, Lunar Drake, it's called. So you haven't seen that yet. That might be something that we might see in the game in the future. The Lunar Drake, big ugly monster, variant on it. A lava basilisk, a lavalisk. Some cool slimes. We've got some different elemental concepts when they're making pyre. How they, how they would make them. And it ends up turning out that the elemental ends up looking like this. And it's, we might see some more elementals in the game when it comes out. But this is a fire elemental that they end up choosing. Here's a cool shadow panther. We, we've seen some of the regular cats. But we have not seen this shadow panther yet in the game. It looks really cool. And then we have the stomper chonker. Some of the giant mimics. And a collab with Joe. And then this one is called a spirit dragon. You know, the world is full of dragons in the game. We got what a worm looks like. We've seen those. And then some wolves and hyenas. Yeah, this is a lot of cool stuff here that you can come in and check out in the Wayfinder art station thing. Here was what the Reaver King would have looked like and then some concepts of it. And this is what the Reaver King turned into. So I think the Reaver King looks really cool. This axe right here, doesn't that axe look very familiar? On the end, I think we've seen this axe used in the Grendel cutscene. So I wonder which axe he'll end up with in the actual game. But like I said, I have this linked in the description. You can see the art station. They have different ones for like Baldur's Gate 3 and Riot Games and Diablo 4, Team Fight Tactics, Jedi Survivor. So it's a pretty cool concept having that if you were an artist or you're looking at like things to get inspired by the art station is like the more professional art portfolio that people use when they're showcasing their work to get jobs in different fields that involve art and ui and stuff like that so it kind of replaced deviant art a long time ago with that information but i think it's pretty cool what do you guys think let me know in the comments hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.